Yeah, I'm worried. Uh, wait. I had a feeling that I'll fail this. You thought you heard something, but it's just the reeds. Maybe we could all fit in there. The lieutenant says. First say, does it have room for three? Not really. We could escort him to the pier, then either one of us can take him inland while the other stays here, but... Yeah. But then who watches him while you're coming back here? Who watches him there while I come back from for you? You come back for me? How about I go and send a boat back for you? What is this farce? This is a fucking farce. I can't. He looks around with strange desperation. Something is happening. Stop. Lillian, you could ask her, maybe. Maybe I can just ask the net picker to watch him. This is no harmless old man. The lieutenant shakes his head, which is true. This fucking world. This world. What is this? He stares at something, who knows what, in the dust. Below the confusion and rage, a fit of Jamai's fool? Like yours, the thought passes, more pressing matters take its place. No, listen, listen now. I tried to listen, but I couldn't. We could all fit on the little boat. Actually, no. I wish I wouldn't have then tried to do the listening before, because, yeah, maybe now I would actually succeed. You could come back for me once you've taken him to the precinct. No, no. It would take a whole day on this island. You go and transport the prisoner. I'll be here. I can escort him to the pier with you. No need to be polite. I'll do it, I guess. This world. What are you talking about? Is this... us? His voice drones out in a sudden gush of wind. I, just, I hate leaving him here, though. I'm so worried. The wind is cold from the east. Your skin is crawling suddenly. If only I would have been able to hear something, what was happening. Is it the pale crowing? What is happening? Oh, that's the... Is that the thing? It's the... It's the weird thing that we tried to find. It's here. It's so big. It's so big. What's that? Point to it. A delicate tangle of arms and legs unfolds from the reeds, limb by limb, to then just stand there, moving its sight-like arms in coastly silence. That is so cool looking, though. I'm so happy we actually saw it. It's no wonder a little trap didn't work when it's so freaking big. It's not a small thing at all. What's that? Point to it. What are you talking about? The old man looks at the reeds, then at you. A giant stick insect. There's nothing there. Well, we see it, but... It guess they don't. He looks confused. The stick insect is over three meters tall. It looks straight at you with its tiny pin brick eyes and its grotesquely small head. Oh, it looks kinda cute. You feel your leg shaking under you and your gun hand move to your holster, but you don't have a gun. There is, I see it. Tell me what you see, damn it. I can't make out one small thing in the reeds. Kim, can you see it? I can see it. Yes, Kim can see it too. It's not a, just a dream, it's not a hallucination. He can see it too. He can't, he's lost, but I also like the noises it's making. It's really cool. Four simple words, thank God. If he can see, then you're not insane. But that means it was true. It's here. She saw it too. It's really there, spinning slowly in absolute silence, it slims long and slender. Be very, very careful. The lieutenant whispers, then takes a step towards the giant anthropod. Be careful. Be really, really careful. Actually, I'm gonna have to <laughs> end here because it's way too... Oh my god, that's amazing though. I like it so much, but I sadly have to end because I've already played so long. I was thinking that maybe I could finish this whole game at one go, but... Oh, at least for a small break. I'll see you a little bit later, but that's so cool. I'm so happy to see that, so bye-bye until then. So I am back, basically, as soon as humanly possible. I just moved a little bit and got this, and we will definitely go and talk to it, but... 
This air smells sweet and scary somehow. Yeah, I wonder why. If I didn't have enough, I wonder what all of did we need to have this uh, or be able to see this creature. I want to change the hat at least because this just that seems so freaking stupid to be wearing. But that's what will I put on? Um, this one again, of course. Yes, makes sense. Um, yeah, okay, cool, amazing. I don't even know what to say, but this is definitely way bigger than I thought it to be. Hello. Insulidian Pasmit. The creature stands on long stilt like legs, antennae hanging from its head like a woman's hair, white and curled at the tips. It is no more than five steps away from you. So very, very close. The segment and antennae move with apprehension, searching for something that's not there. So cool looking. Um, oh my god, I have a good chance of doing this. Read like tufts stick out of its joints. As the insect moves its forearms, it produces a faint hiss, like a reel-to-reel -reel machine spinning after the tape breaks. Oh boy, we will definitely try to do this. That's actually, it's really interesting. Uh, late the pheromone on tick. Yeah, we did for ourselves, didn't we? And the miracle way out in the west. Don't remember what it, that exactly was about. Something related to this. Your corpse will be marked by star. And Lina's childhood experience that we heard. Whisper, this is the Insulidian Pasmit. It really is. It is. The lieutenant whispers behind you. You hear the familiar ring of his jacket unzipping slowly, painstakingly so. Trying to take a picture, I think. You glance over your shoulder. The lieutenant holds a piece of millet aluminum. He begins to pull it open, extremely carefully. It's the camera. Whisper, are you sure you won't scare it off? We need a photo. No one will believe us. He continues to pull the lens open. From the corner of your eye, you see a sudden cascade of motion ripple through the pasmid's limbs. A series of ultrasonic clicks fills your ears. I am not palatable. Do not eat me. I am afraid. Oh, It's afraid. Stop now, please. I won't be one of those fools who didn't take a picture. He has stopped fiddling with the camera but does not put it down. Sure, but don't do it yet. You see the pasmid turn to him. Its mandibles and antennae reaching out. The motion are quick, sudden. Whisper. Who cares what they think, Kim? Understood. Of course. He comes to abruptly. He says with a nod. The spindly mechanism turns itself back to you. Its antennae taking their measure of the air slowly. I think it's probably better that I do this rather than something else. So approach carefully. Let's hope. Yes. Oh, so cool. Slowly, with your breath held, you take two small, small steps towards the pasmid. The creature lets out a series of ultrasonic clicks that swarm around your head like swallows. Like laughter. A sort of happiness. Hissing and clicking, it extends its mandible like antenna to greet you. You're right below it now, looking up at the colossal chitin of its white limbs. The head of the creature is crowned by reeds and its eyes are like small droplets of water. Hello, I am Harry. I don't really know who I am. No reply. A total ancient silence comes from its mouth, along with what appears to be some kind of a foam. The stridulation of its limbs continue all around you. Stand on your tiptoes and look more closely. You were right. Little bubbles form on the mouth parts of the creature, on its segmented lower lips. Lip. It looks to be foaming slowly. The foam is white, then yellowish. The faintest smell, like you've never felt before, like burnt roses. Wow. Whisper to Kim. Kim, it's foaming. Careful. It may be poisonous. The lieutenant watches you apprehensively. 
The foam slowly turns a darker shade, like burnt caramel, as the insect moves its mouth parts, masticating. The little bubble begins to burst one by one, letting out that same smell like summer burning. Apricot. Blossoms, white blossoms erupt in a sensation like gold hands on your face. That's... That's related to the woman, the girl. Spoke to a hangman, did not give up on pasmit. Nose of pathogenesis. I, I want to be able to take that picture too. Hmm... <laughs> Ah, oh goodness, if I knew what to do. Um... I, I think I should try to do this. Tell me, what are you doing? Yay. I exist. That so, sounds so cool. Yeah, we all exist. Okay, I exist too. Tell me what it's like for you. Mm. Fire burning inside. Fire? Where? Inside or on the horizon, pale fire. This thing we're both sensing is coming to an end. That is your problem. Nothing ever ends for me. There is only room for two, maybe three pictures in my mind. Interesting. For me, it's a series of half-lit images, a kind of darkness being interred upon, transient, dim, moist. Intruded upon by what? Shapes of plants and animals, an internal sensation, a swarm of sounds, tiny vibrations on the inside of my forearms, all speaks of complexities totally beyond my understanding. I am at the end of a narrow funnel, weightless, so light it only feels like something to be me. In truth, perhaps I am nothing. I certainly do not have a soul, and if I did, it would never burn. Interesting. Ah, uh, you're the type of animal I would like to be. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Why do you ask? Sometimes, when molting, I recrawl a lost limb. One time sometimes went wrong and a small leg replaced the missing antenna. That's absolutely nothing. That's not a big deal, right? The leg tried to move around independently, making it hard to walk. Well, you don't have a foot there now. Yes, thankfully someone ate it. The next time I molted, I grew an antenna again. <laughs> That's very intriguing. So uh, I'm a detective, you know? So am I. I was born to detect. Decked, sacros, rewards, and semi o chemicals. What were you born to detect? I was born to detect you. Yes. No one detected me for such a long, long time, for thousands of years. I tittered out of sight, trade myself in greenery. This is my masterpiece. No one believed I exist, almost no one, until you came, detective. Dripping of blood that smells like strawberries across the calm sea, the first in a thousand years. Is this a dream? What is happening? No, you're awake. I am real. Light is forming me. This is real. Where does this come from, all this, around us, the world? Not even the birds know that. Not even the water lilies. We need to know, though. Perhaps it's sent to us by a god. I think we should ear eat it. <laughs> if it's a leaf, you can put it in your mouth or a reed. Yum yum. Very yum yum. <laughs> so what exactly are you? I am a known species of the order Phantasmodea, endemic to the Insulidian Isola. For the last 350 years, I have hidden in plain sight, masquerading as the reeds. Molding, cloning myself, unfolding at night to play with traspins and boyos. Do you have the things from the boyo? <laughs> it may have unknown, dangerous biochemical characteristics that help it maintain its camouflage, probably. I went unnoticed by the first settlers and the land surveyors of the suzerain. 
also by the soldiers of the revolution and the officials of the occupation. Even the Seminese islanders who came here first but did not stay have not seen me. I have stayed hidden through four forms of government and two scientific revolutions until I was accidentally discovered by a detective of the citizen militia in Ravanchol district of Martinis, March 51, as in right now. <laughs> Are you poisonous? Yes, I do not have a startle display, so I use neurogenerative alumone to aid in camouflage. Do not worry, it is only destructive over long periods of time. The deserter has been here for a long time. <gasps> and because that deserter has been here such a long time, that's why he has these mind problems, because the poison from this creature. Are you the miracle? No, you are the miracle. How? The moral of our encounter is... I am a relatively median life form, while you are extreme, all engulfing madness, a volatile simian nervous system ominously new to the planet. The pale, too, came with you. Really? No one remembers it before you. Well, at least we've discovered it. <laughs> the Nidarians do not. The radial is symmetrical, do not. There is an almost anonymous agreement between the birds and the plants that you are going to destroy us all. Wait, the bale is human-made? It is a nervous shadow cast into the world by you, eating away at reality. By me? A great unnatural territory, its advent coincides with the arrival of the human mind. I don't have that kind of power. I at least wish I don't. You are a violent and irreparable, irrepressible miracle. The vacuum of cosmos and the stars burning in it are afraid of you. Given enough time, you would wipe us all out and replace us with nothing, just by accident. How is that possible? We suspect it will be something like the oxygen holocaust that wiped out an aerobic life 2.6 million billion years ago, when organisms first started breathing, only much worse. Instead of air, you exhale thoughts. There are no trees that eat thoughts. Well, we do have so many goddamn thoughts that that's true. Verse, how? Everything your eyes touch goes back there, behind the nerve mirror. What if you blink? Are we still here? Please don't blink. What if you misplace us all one day or just forget? I don't want to blink. I don't. <laughs> Have I always thought this way? No, you're only thinking it now. This is a revelation. I will be extra, extra careful not to blink, sick insect, don't worry. Please be, or one day one of you will close your eyes and sight, and open them to see that none of this ever existed. Kim, am I having a violent epileptic seizure? It doesn't look like that, no. What does it look like? You're just staring at it. He whispers. Then I think I'm having a vision about the final fate of mankind. Okay. Is it somehow related to the case? <laughs> After a second, the lieutenant asks. No, I told you what it's about. Our fate. I think we should take the picture. And then you should back away from the unstudied species. Yes, I think so too. I have to say goodbye now. I have no more thoughts. That was all. No, there is one more. Of all the creatures I've met, you are the most beautiful. Thank you. I also have one more thing to say to you before you go. That woman, turn from the ruin. Turn and go forward for all mankind. Turn away from that woman as in my past. Yep, that woman who we loved. I will. She was hell on earth. It doesn't take three meters thick insect to tell you that. Whisper to Kim. Okay, Kim, take the picture. Okay. With a slow ring of metal, the lieutenant slides the lens open and raises it to eye level. 
There is no change in the insect motion while it's being aimed by the camera. It remains fixated on you. In three. If it the moves, left. you jump back. I'll shoot. Here we go. Three, two, one. The left and then whispers his voice is tense. But I don't... I wish that I can also still raise my hand towards it, but we'll see. Oh, that's such a cool picture though. That's a ridiculously cool picture. The shrill flash of the camera cuts the air like the blade of a sword. The spasmid freezes in its bright light, head turned towards the lieutenant. Hypnotized by the flash, it stands frozen before you. So cool looking in this picture, this like so ridiculously cool looking. The sweat on your arm feels gold as ice, as if you're frozen as well in the shadow of its science statue of Shichenu's marble. I got it. You hear the lieutenant whisper as the creature's shape develops onto photo paper in his hand. A polychrome coast of white streaks against the reeds and the sky, and you, a shadow before it. For all time. Carefully bed its kite like forearm. The limb before you is incredibly light, like eggshell. It's much lighter than the reed. You feel a soft push could tip the creature over, its hollow exoskeleton collapsing. Run your hand up the slender limb, higher. A small shutter passes the creature's arm. High above you, its black pearl eyes still glisten, mesmerized by the light passing its nervous system. There is some kind of countdown happening as it slowly processes the overwhelming brightness of the signal. The invertebrate is regaining control. The simul's overloaded it. It's passing like an extended moment or a gallstone. Slowly, I can't reach out to it any more than afterwards. I should have done it before, then this picture would have made really a lot of sense, more sense even, but still, it's just so cool. I wanted to make sure we get the picture because it's so cool. Slowly reach out and touch the creature's whisker. The antennae hangs from a great height. With your hand shaking, you barely touch the tip of the left whisker. On contact, the chitin curls into a spiral. Like the tip of a poison ivy, its dust on your fingertip feels cold, ticklish. The sensation is electrifying, resounding through your body. Be careful, detective. It's moving. We got it. Back off. Bye. You lovely little creature. Or I'm pretty big, to be honest. Another shadow pulses through the creature's limb. It jolts back to life, like a record continuing where it left off. In a swaying, praying motion, even the small black burls of its eyes do not stray from you. They are filled with adoration and curiosity. The adoration of some wheel or dominion spinning around its parent deity. And the curiosity of a common wasp tasting sugar in a fizzy drink. Raise your hand slowly. The insect, inspect, insect stops its tritulation, seeming to observe you. Below its crown of reeds, little pinprick eyes detect motion, glittering. The world stands still around you. Suddenly there is silence. No, stop. Be afraid. Put your hand down then. The invertebrate comes back to life, strutulating. Sets of complex eyes follow you, moving in tandem. On either side of the insect's small head. <sighs> Bye. Disengage slowly. Thank you. As you're turning away, the basmid mirrors your movement, stepping onto water. The long limbs carry its feather weight without breaking its surface. Aww. There it goes, into the distance. And just like that, it's gone, skating away across the shigis skull mirror like a skipping stone, leaving nothing but circles on the water. And something under it, in the place it stood, popping there, among the reeds, a collection of items. Oh, means this, I guess? It's gone. The lieutenant looks north with his hand raised to his brow. It can walk on water. Apparently, yes. 
like a water strider. Only, I've never seen anything like that in my life. He shakes his head with amazement. Yeah, neither had I. And it's amazing. What's that in the reeds? Looks like a nest of some sort. We should have a look. Okay, what now? Please talk. What now? The old man behind you repeats suddenly. He's put his hand into the ash. It's dirty and black. In some kind of strange semi-catatonic state. Our suspect is not looking so good. We need to check on him. Yeah. Soon. Let me check on this first, though. Eh. Yeah. Fair further T500 helmet. It looks like the goddamn helmet of those guys. And then rifle scope. The goddamn scope. And this is the evidence from Klaus's password. That's amazing stuff. I guess I should look at him first though. What is it? What do you want from me? I can't go. The old man looks around confused. Maybe he doesn't even survive anywhere else anymore. Something is very wrong with him now. Sir, how could you not see the pasmit? See? He stares at the reeds and falls silent. Hmm. Mr. Dras? The man does not respond. He keeps staring, black eyes glazed over and bulging from their sockets, his cast student's mouth shaking. With fear and longing. Like an addict of some sort of a terrible substance, yep. The poison of the creature. Wave your hand in front of his eyes. A light shiver passes him, followed by nothing. His hands are trembling and he breathes slowly. He's going into some kind of psychomotor immobility. The good news is, this solves our transportation problem, doesn't it, Mr. Dross? I guess that's good. The lieutenant inspects him gently. The trembling mouth appears to sight. Between this and the broken tire he's used for a boat, I think it's safe to leave him here while we go and get help. It will need to be medical first, I'm afraid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. What happened to this man? Old what age has and shock. He looks at him, then you. I think it's actually the phasmid. Yes, the arrest and the appearance of the phasmid, the combined stress. But you think it's something more than that, don't you? Yes, he, look at you. he looks at us. There's much more. Remember what it said when it spoke. Quite a few things about that health check you did on him make sense now. Before, when I evaluated his state, he seemed strangely animated. He was energetic and articulate. After all these years alone, with little hygiene or medication, I would expect worse. He nods. Perhaps his animation is induced by something in the past mid. It does not seem to be animated now it's left. Honestly, I'm ready to believe anything at this point. Maybe it is psychoactive. Yeah, he looks to the sea. I mean, why not? It's three meters tall. He takes off his glasses and cl cleans them. When he puts them back on, he's still staring at the sea. I do think that he's addicted to that thing. Like a drug? Yeah, he has displayed addict behavior and not just to painkillers. His pupils appear to be dilated. They still are. He examines the catatonic man's eyes. It's not just chemical. It's... As if it's infatu infatuated with it. Some kind of oxytocin release mechanism would go with the pupils. But this is way above me, detective. I can understand. And yeah, he couldn't see it, Kim. It's just the reads for him. That could be part of the shock. But you're right. Something is off here. Mr. Dras. He touches the man's shoulder. No response. <sighs> Maybe this is how the past mid has stayed hidden all these years possible. Then how did we see it? Oh, you mean, whatever does this, does it over time? 
Teenagers, kids, drunks, citing the brief, and hence not credible. But anyone who spends a long time with it. Yeah, that makes sense that like, if you see it like for a bit like we did here, you can actually see it. But then afterwards, when you spend so long in the same environment, you, it's not something you can see anymore, he thinks. Yes, you forget it's there. Mm -hmm. Mr. Dross, have you ever seen a stick insect? Pretending to be the reeds. The lieutenant inspects the man. The, the, the. the old man stutters. The doctors will have to look at this. I hope your station has better medical personnel than 57. This is a little advanced for a nurse. Indeed. It's definitely toxic, the past meat. It told me it is even. Told you? Yes, good. During your long staring match, I understand. <laughs> he looks at the man, then you. Yeah, well, yep, special stuff. He's been here for a long time. Who knows how much of it is in its company. He did seem distressed when it finally came to arresting him. Like he didn't want to leave this place and the insect, maybe. He looks at his notebook. I have absolutely forgotten to take notes. I hope I remember all of this. This will be one hell of a report. Thank God we have the photo. Indeed. He shakes his head in disbelief. We found some things on the Pasmid's nest, Mr. Tross. He stares into the reeds. Your words don't stir anything in him. Perhaps you should... Show him the detached scope. I... I lost. He turns his eyes on it. You lost it, Mr. Tross. He turns his eyes to the reeds again, as he's done so many times. Beige and white stripes. He lost the scope. Then it somehow made its way over there. With the help of a magpie phasmid. The lieutenant observes the lens sparkle in your hand. This sight is a T9, Mr. Dross. Was it attached to the rifle when you made the shot? Silence. Not even a sigh. You've gotten all you will out of this port being. Yeah, I had a feeling like that's the case. Then show him the orange's passport. No reaction, his breathing is slow, and he appears very old all of a sudden, around 80. Let's have a closer look at that after. I think mm -hmm. I'll be more useful than him. He nods towards the old man, and then the ceramic helmet. Nothing, just dull staring, not even rage left for whatever, wherever he is. The last embers have gone out, the war is over. If Kuno kicked it into the sea, as he said he did, mm -hmm. the Ab would put it back here. This makes sense. Mr. Dross could have picked it up, or the Phasmid even. If it did, this is incredible. Yeah, I'm going to let you rest now, Mr. Dross. The plastic cape flaps around his face in a gust of wind. His back is slouched and his mouth open. The blacks of his eyes are receding. His pupils are returning to normal. Hang tight, man. We should think about getting back to the mainland to get help. He'll be safe here. If we don't take too long. Yeah. Makes sense. My god though, that was something. I do kind of feel that I want to now go and forget one of these. And I guess it will be this. Because this minus two to succession is kind of sucky. So let's get something at least new going on, right? Um, Confusing behavior. The precarious world. I think precarious world even more so. All red checks fail. That's just ridiculous, though. Maybe I can't really go and take it right now, because that's just... Like, all my red checks would just automatically fail if I'm going to do this. Like, it's lovely otherwise, but... Then I would really need to be able to pass time somehow, logically. So, let's go with the Jamrock Shuffle, maybe? Uh, you look inside contain. By now it's clear you like to look inside containers. You like to open doors and see what's behind them. Maybe secrets, maybe more choosy containers. Let's be honest, you like all containers. Trash cans, utensils, trays, manholes, gold pockets. Secret containers left behind by the Philippian king that holds forbidden relics. Okay, you haven't come across one of those yet, but one day... Wait, is that why you're so hell-bent on opening containers? Do you think you'll find the Holy Scepter and the Orbe de Motange? Um, yeah, I guess we'll do that other than... I guess for a moment I can start this, because maybe if I get it started and get it done before we leave the island, because there's a few items we have to look into. 
anyways, inspect. The bolt action 4.46 caliber Chiang Kong is the poor man's sniper rifle. While not the most reliable of firearms, it is relatively precise due to a very manageable recoil, thus allowing the shooter to take multiple consecutive shots fast. This spectacle piece is missing a scope though. Not anymore. A common 30mm sniper scope attachable to almost any bolt action 4.46 caliber. It uses an older style non dotted rangefinder reticle. Seaweed is still stuck on the lens and it's suffered water damage from its time in the past Miss Dowry. Then, of course, this canister and stuff. Here's this interactable specifically thing. Yeah, I did interact with all those. This well-traveled passport with visas, just has stamped in it, is issued by the Republic of Orange. You found it in a passmith's nest on the island. You can open it for more details. This passport issued by the Sovereign Republic of Orange is issued to a black-haired woman called Katarasin Alasi. Classius hidden documents from the MT boy. Indeed, the lieutenant looks at it in your hands. Look at the photo. It's Klasse, with short black hair and glasses. She looks boys, younger, somehow. An old photo before life came and did what it does. It says Katarizin Alasi, but after all, yeah. She said it would be for Anouk Meyer Smith. Yeah, that Anouk was again then. Meyer Smith. Yeah, that is again then a lie. Not a lie, he opens his notes. Gatherine Alassine was supposed to be her real name. Where's Klaasle comes from, remember? God damn it. So, again, yeah, lies and lies and lies after lies. We never got her real name then, right? Yeah, Gatherine Alassine was supposed to, the Klaasle is supposed to be the real name, and it's clearly not, then that's again a lie. I told you she kept lying to you. She's probably lying to someone else right now in another city. Katarina Lassien was supposed to be her real name. She lied to us. Yes, somehow she managed to lie to us one more time. In a way, she's still lying to us right now. The lieutenant smiles, indeed. But at least she didn't kill anyone here. So, I think it's okay we let her go, even though she's just a complete liar. You can't trust anything she says. <laughs> so, I wonder what's her real name then. I don't know, but it's not Katarzyna Alasio, or Klasio, or Anouk Meyer smith We didn't even scratch the surface with her, detective. Indeed. Perhaps it's better that we didn't arrest her. Who knows what hell she'd be raising in my district by now. Yeah. He looks east. The winds are silent, the streets are empty of her. She's no longer in the city of Revanchol, wherever she is. So, what was this doing in the Pasmit's nest, though? It's a good question. Maybe our man, Mr. Dross, took it from Classius, or whatever her name was. Hiding place, or...? Yeah, I would assume so. But, I, I think the Pasmit took it. Do I? I guess... The basmid took it, and it, I sensed it to do so. I saw something open up the boyo with spindly legs point to your head. Like a magpie? What a coincidence. Then it would also have collected the other objects, which would be highly unusual. He looks around. I can see how the helmet could wash up on the island, and the scope. Maybe Mr. Dross lost it, but to seek this out would be very unusual behavior for an arthropod. Yeah, it is, but... Would it? Maybe it was simply curious. Perhaps it was curious, like an octopus? An octopus belongs to a very different class. It's not even an insect, it's a mollusk. But yes, I see your point. It's possible. Passport away. More pass. Postcards. I guess he has the picture, I can't look at the picture itself. I so would, would wish to look into the picture, but yeah, I don't know if I can really take this. Like, I would love to go forward with this, but the problem is... Okay, yeah, it is still there, the 2%, but 
If I would go for it, the red checks would all fail. I would feel so bad if that's why I would uh, not be able to do some of the things that otherwise I could. But that was regardlessly quite amazing, I have to say. That was really cool. I really didn't expect that. Anyways, I expected the pass me to be really small. After all, thinking about the little cages that <laughs> they tried to capture or catch it in, it was just like... Yeah, that would never fit into anything of a sort, so... No way in hell. At least, this creature is real. And to be honest, I kind of believe Koltu Mama Dakwa is also real. However, I don't know if we can ever find that creature. Uh, I could put a point into that, sure, but is it worth it at this point? Is it? I kind of... I don't know if it is, but on the other hand, while well, we happen to be able to, should I? <sighs> maybe... Maybe I can do it, because it is here, right now, and here. And I can easily just put a few of these things on that give conceptualization right now, so... You can try one more time to have a look into it. Does anything stand out as unusual? Still only 42% chance, hmm, well... Oh, we did it. I am amazed. Heroic success somehow. Oh yes, under the bed there is a rather extensive collection of critical theory that is dar life non-affirming left-wing literature published by small imprints such as Aperture Firm and Usia. It's not exactly a light reading. Um... Look, game, a book, left wing. I have no comments, do you? Ooh, Sia. Looks like our straggler has kept some literature around for a quick ideological fix. Yeah, he enunciates the word diligently. As usual, he does not respond to a political agitation. Yeah, and neither do I care him to do so. Let's have these clothes on, because why wouldn't we? Well, one more little thing solved, but yeah, that would have just basically confirmed that he was politically aligned. Very much so. Pretty much. So it wasn't really that important right now, but hey, while we happen to still be around here, why wouldn't we try? Now to wish that we can actually sail back safely. That is my hope, at least, that we can do that. Warm air from the inside of the building. It's warmer there than out here. Yeah, well, especially when we started the engine. I'm not surprised or the thing with the fuel. These stairs feel ancient, so the feet run up them long ago. Yeah, ages ago. Let's sail. The skiff is swaying on the ways by the rock. Let's return to the mainland. Let's. We are done here. He says, adjusting his glasses as he looks out over the water. The skiff rocks gently under your fate as you get in. The ride back is uneventful and quiet. But, for the sound of conversation on the water, there is someone inland waiting for you. Two men and a woman stand on the concrete square of a nameless village, looking at the small yellow boat as it draws closer. The sea is calm. You reach the jetty and climb off the skiff. To be continued with Kirarusha next time in Disco Elysium. See you all then.